Hello, I'm Vicky Proudler and in this video we'll be looking at the sequencing exercise for Grade 7 of Trinity College London's Keyboard Syllabus. Now in this exercise we have a pre-recorded part which is shown on the music in a smaller score with a smaller font. I'm going to pre-record that onto my keyboard and show how that's done now um, because in the actual exam you would need to play the live part above that pre-recorded accompaniment. And it is only the live part which is marked by the examiner. So, for pre-recording, I've set up my keyboard to have a strings voice um, in the right one part. And I've also given myself a left voice with a bass line. And I'm going to pre-record those along with the accompaniment at the same time into my keyboard. To do that, I'm going to press my record button on my keyboard and the sync start for the accompaniment. It's as simple as that. I'm going to play it in like this. I'll leave a few seconds before stopping the recording because it naturally fades off from the sound, gives a nice effect at the end. So now on my keyboard I can program that recording in and save it for later use by going into my song select menu and saving that song. So I'm just going to call it Spanish for now. and it's saved, ready to use later. Now I'm going to program in my live performance parts. So that's the top uh, two staves of the score. And we're going to program in flute as the right one voice. And then my left voice is now going to be piano. Um, there will need to be a left split point here as well to make sure that both of those work and it tells us in the top box that the left voice should be split to D3. To do that I'm going into my function menu, into split points and setting the split to the third D from the left hand side, that's D3, like that. Okay. Now, also in the top box, it says that uh, the volume of the pre-recorded track should be appropriately set so that the live performance is clear. So the way I'm going to do that is to adjust the song volume. So I'm going to turn my song volume right down to 70. And uh, I'm going to turn my other voices up, my right one and my left voice, up to 110 each. So there's 40 difference there between the live performance and the pre-recording, so it's clear for the examiner uh, exactly what's being played live and you can really hear your performance. And I'm going to sound check that because every time it's slightly different, it does need carefully looking at. So as soon as I press my play button, I'll get my pre-recorded track. But I can set it to sync start when I start playing my live part over the top. I'm going to set the sync start now and then just sound check to test that uh, that's all working with the balance properly. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to turn the left voice up slightly just to check that everything's really clear. Now I'm going to talk about the fade at the end of the exercise. So in the last two bars we need to fade out but both of my hands are going to be playing so I'm going to preset the pedal to the fade function to do that for me. On this keyboard 
I do that by going into the function menu here and into controller. Then I have a choice of what I want the pedal to be uh, controlling, so I've selected fade in and out. Also in the function men menu is utility and in there I can set exactly how many seconds I want the fade to last. In this particular case I want it to last for six seconds um, because uh, that's about how long those two bars will take at 75 beats per minute. So that's all set up and my pedal will now fade out as soon as I press it and do the fade at the end. And now I'll play it through for you. So I'm going to set my sync start and then the pre-recorded material will automatically start when I start playing. So that sequencing exercise gives a lot to think about uh, with uh, the lyrical live performance of the flute and piano really needing to be carefully balanced there with the strings and bass parts as well as the rhythm, uh, but makes it making a really good effect in the end. <laughs>